This is the Nexus Special, Episode 10, the Mars Curiosity Rover, on Monday, August 6, 2012. And now, with a live feed onto the exciting moments before and after the exciting touchdown. Hey, how's it going? Hey there, pretty good. It's good. <clears throat> Did you uh, get much sleep last night? Well, I was up for part of the night watching a uh, rover land on Mars, actually. Yeah, me too. That was that was pretty exciting, actually. So, what, what did you what did you do to watch the rover land on Mars? Uh, well, so NASA had their coverage uh, on NASA TV, and of course, there were also the science community had a lot of uh, commentary streams going. Uh, there was a Google Hangout with Phil Plate, the author of the Bad Astronomy blog, and a couple other notable sort of. Uh, pop astronomer type people, um, some other space bloggers and things like that. Uh, I think Twit did uh, yeah live. Yep, coverage. Twit, Twit um, actually was lucky enough to get some people that had actually worked on the, the uh, Sky Crane craft thing, and oh, yeah. uh, they had a little interview with uh, you know a fifteen minute interview with that guy. So that was pretty cool actually. To listen to him talk about how they built and why, what the purpose of building it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the NASA TV coverage was actually pretty good. Um, they it, had, it got better uh, as soon as the, uh, I don't know, as soon as the, I don't know, payload the pre- entered the atmosphere. I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, the pre-show or the, like the pre-entry stuff was kind of this filler. It was but. it was mostly filler, but it was still interesting. It was just yeah. not the main event. Right. Um, and so you also had the sim thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And so there was also uh, Eyes on the Solar System, I think. Yeah, uh, I think that's what it's later, called. Yeah. Which you can... It, I mean, it's still going. Um, and you can look at any of NASA's live missions or current, like, present missions um, and watch their progress, which is pretty sweet. Uh so we had struggled for part of, you know, for, for a good, you know, 10 minutes or so trying to figure out how people knew what the exact speed of the, I don't know, craft was while it was, you know, hurtling towards Mars. Right. And so eventually I found a link to it on somebody's Google Plus page. And then we all opened up the simulator. And of course, it's in Java, so that, that took forever. But it was really cool. So definitely, yeah. definitely a cool, <laughs> cool deal, a cool experience. Very cool. I I think... I'll make sure to bookmark that so I can watch the next thing that happens. Whatever the next mission to land or do whatever is going to be. Um, but I don't think that we've said what we were watching yet. Oh, what were we watching? I thought it was obvious. Well, I, I would hope so. Um, but we were actually watching the Mars Curiosity rover or the Mars Science Laboratory, or MSL for short, um, land uh, on Mars last night at about 11.30 Central Time, I think. Yeah, so uh, 11.30, no, 12.30 Central Time is when it landed. Oh, 12.30, okay. Yeah, 12.30, yeah. 1 or so, yeah. Right. Um, and, and, then, so, and then we got the big cheering right after that. Right from the live feed from the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Yep. Which was very cool. There's some good atmosphere there. Everyone was very excited. And so, you know, you know how mission control is, you know, like the, uh, the, 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 you know, some stage has deployed or, you know, it has entered or, you know, there's, there's those words that, you know, that are associated with mission control, but it's funny too, to see, you know, all the normal people there also, you know, Sitting there with their Macs, eagerly watching their screens and their 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 visualization. Right. And it was kind of funny yeah, too that uh, you know we had our simulator that we were running you know here at home and at your house and uh, and everybody else in the world, but NASA had their own little visualization, and I still think ours was better. I don't know. Theirs had more like data. Yeah, but, but theirs guess... theirs didn't look nearly as nice. That's true, but they. I mean. Yeah, I think their models were probably more accurate oh, than what sure. they show. I mean, like what what we had was to look good, not necessarily to be accurate. Right, and it did look great. I mean, it 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 did. It was, I was very impressed actually. You know, it showed you the velocity. It showed you the distance to, 
the uh, time till entry, time till landing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it showed you distance to and uh, from Earth, I believe, too. Right, and um, it had uh, the stages all animated on there and stuff. Parachute yep. deployment, the heat shield, it, it, like evacuation, whatever. Um, yeah, very cool. Uh, speaking of the parachute deployment, did you see the photo um, that they showed this afternoon of the like sky crane capsule uh, with the parachute behind it? No, I have not seen that. The, yeah, so the the Mars high rise satellite was orbiting. They timed it so that the high rise satellite had a view of the landing site and everything so that they could get some telemetry data. And it also allowed them to get a picture of the... I'll put this in the show notes, but it it is pretty cool, actually. So it's it's, it's essentially just a picture of, you know, the parachute deploying. Yeah, but that's amazing that they timed that and everything to that they could get a picture of a satellite or of a rover descending to the surface with a different satellite that they put in orbit a long time ago. Well, you like, know, but it, isn't that like the compound effect? Isn't that the idea of what we're doing? We're establishing an infrastructure. Right. No, but it's amazing. Yeah, it definitely is incredible. Very. Um, and so there was another news broadcast two hours ago, I think. Um, I'm not sure if that's right. Yeah, I think it was 6 p.m. here. The They did a new or another sort of like uh, press conference type thing where they had new images from today because um, the satellite went below the mm-hmm. the horizon so they could no longer uh, bounce the radio signal from to that satellite and then back to Earth. So yesterday when we got those first few and in- those first two initial pictures, the one of the shadow and the one of the, I don't know, wheel, I guess... Do we yeah. know if the camera has less dust on it now? Uh, it does, indeed. There's a new photo. If you, uh, I noticed it on the Curiosity Rover Twitter account. Um, they posted a new photo with the dust cover off. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So this uh, this whole rover thing now, of course, as hopefully everybody knows, it's not like this is the first thing from Earth to like you know move around on Mars, right? Right. So uh, my impression from talking to people last night is that this, for some reason, this marked a monumental change in how. Uh, I, 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 for some reason, a lot of people were promoting this as the big thing, a big change that was going to spark things in the future. Well, this is a pretty big deal. Um, One of the reasons that it's a big deal is because of the technical difficulty of the landing site that they chose, um, which had a very narrow window for error. They had to be within... uh, There's a map somewhere that shows the the accuracy of the other rovers that were sent to Mars um, and sort of their sphere of... or their possible landing circle. Um, So how accurate essentially the their landing gear and stuff was and so this rover had to land in a very narrow space and so the whole sky crane operation um was built specifically for this uh and also to eliminate the problem with the dust clouds and stuff but i mean that was a huge right of engineering to yeah do that. definitely very amazing so um and from my technical standpoint, because I, I come this from the podcasting and blogger angle, um, is that in this particular, I think this is one of the first times where social media and then the infrastructure of the internet has been mature enough to handle an event such as this. So this is one of the first times where the world didn't rely on any uh, centralized like broadcasting agency to stream mm-hmm. content to, to viewers because here in the United States where we all are, it was nighttime. It was, you know, 11, you know, 12, 
30. And right. most news probably wasn't on. I mean, I don't think I saw any new anyone like telling anyone to go like, oh, look, go look, go check Channel 5, go check ABC for news about the rover. I, I, I saw people pointing to the Internet for news about the rover. And I, and I think that, that, that infrastructure that we've built up around the Internet, of course, also helped this become a pivotal uh, mission to Mars, I guess. And also, I think Twitter, for me at least, was really interesting because as soon as the rover touched down on Mars, you, you saw from the video everybody cheering, and then immediately on Twitter, just thousands of tweets started pouring in with, we made it, we did it, great. Right, yeah, no, that, that was definitely another one of the reasons that this got so much coverage was due to the NASA's ability to broadcast stream it stream coverage from the JPL online and then also all the other coverage from like independent bodies uh, and their own streaming and right. tweeting and all that stuff so yeah it was it was definitely a big deal uh, to a lot of people and it was uh, people a lot of people knew that it was happening and were able to watch it real time instead of you know when whatever opportunity landed on the Martian surface, it was people heard about it after the fact. They couldn't watch it real time. I don't know. Right. And I, think- and, I, and I feel like back then, I'm not sure when opportunity, you know, what was, but, uh, you know, it, it's interesting to me because now we have the ability to actually, I don't know, share things online that we could never do before. We always had to rely on this established, you know, information, I don't know, distribution. But now we can do it, and now it actually, you know, works really well. Right. So the the landing date of Opportunity was December, January 25th, 2004. And I think that's right before Facebook started. Right. So, right. Yeah, so almost before... It wasn't really a thing then. Yeah, exactly. O- almost before Gmail started. I mean... So now this is, I think this is the first time where we're seeing a, you know, a rover with actual, like, buzz around it because of the internet. So that's, that's really interesting for me. Yeah, well, the whole, the whole live, like, coverage thing is is a huge deal and makes it pretty exciting, actually, actually to watch. Right, exactly. Uh, I mean, you, you, you felt it in that mission control room. Right. It was very cool. So do you think this... Uh, really is a pivotal thing for people going forward. Do you think this will change anything in NASA for funding, or I don't know? Um, well, I think I think it's a big deal as far as public- publicity for NASA and their mission and what they're actually accomplishing. Um, I read a very good tweet this morning. Um, somebody had said that to finance the or NASA's budget. Uh, I don't know if it was NASA's budget or just the Curiosity rover. Um, cost each taxpayer about seven dollars. Yep, I saw that tweet too. So, just think if you paid fourteen instead of seven, or even twenty dollars. Uh, and when you think about how much people pay in taxes, that's really not very much. And what NASA could accomplish then. So I think that sort of sentiment is becoming more popular, and this definitely helps that. Uh, and also, it's a big deal because of the size of the rover. This is the biggest rover that we've ever sent out. It's the size of a car, essentially. Um, and it's got very advanced, uh, like a very advanced onboard laboratory, um, that will allow it to accomplish its mission, uh, in the Gale Crater and hopefully beyond if it lasts long enough. Well, I mean, I, I think it, I think this, um, I think, I think it's really interesting that we have, um, really modern instruments on this rover also compared to. What was modern in 2004, of course, was really right. almost literally made in 2000, and by the time it got to the rover, it was pretty old already. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is a big deal as far as what what hopefully what what it will accomplish, and also the sort of the technical feat of getting it there safely, and which has already been accomplished. So I, I just found some other tweets now for a comparison. The rover cost 2.6 billion dollars. Now that sounds like a lot of money, right? But right. the TSA's budget in 2011 was 8.2 billion dollars. So I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so do you know if um, I mean uh, just 
because this wasn't taking place during the school year, I imagine a lot of children who didn't have parents that are scientifically active or aware of maybe, I can kind of guess that maybe young kids probably didn't see this live. And of course, being so late, they probably weren't awake to do so. Um, so what do you think about that? Like, is there any... Well, I mean, that's just... Yeah, if, if you don't have parents, I guess, that follow that tor- sort of thing and would... I mean, there aren't very many people, I guess, that would keep their kids up for that no. that aren't scientists or what, what engineers or something like that. Right. Um, so, but I definitely think that thanks to the social media coverage, like like you were saying, people our age in our generation, high school and stuff, um, knew about it and were able to follow it themselves a lot more easily if they were interested. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, I think this was a great, uh, all around a great experience. I, I don't think I, I don't remember opportunity at all. And when the shuttles launched and when they came back to Earth, I never really paid attention because it was just never, I don't know, televised on the internet, I guess. Uh, so this right. is the first time I really got into it. So it's really, really great. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. So they have, like, they show the sh- shuttle launches and stuff. They have that on TV sometimes. and But you get to see it take off. And then that's all you get to see. You don't see it land well, or leave it to CNN for the news bite. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is this is very awesome and fun to watch. Um, there's lots of there. There will be lots of new information in the near future. Um, the rover hasn't actually unfolded its main head yet, its main uh, camera apparatus and stuff. So. Right. It's using the small cool. camera in the back right now. Yeah, it's using the has cams. I think there's one on each wheel and one in the front and one in the back. Mm-hmm. So there'll be some exciting stuff hopefully coming out of that mission very yeah, soon. I think so. And we'll, of course, be talking about it on the universe when that news is released to us. Of course. Yeah. So that'll be good. So I yeah. I, I also have this uh, special treat. And so yesterday or this morning, I guess, when the rover was landing i actually was recording what we were saying and what nasa was saying in the control room so i i'll put that at the end of the show and you can listen to that you can listen to the excitement i'll put that in there yep yeah so that's good uh anything else no i think that's it so where can we uh find you on the internet for all of our science fans uh sammy burtz on twitter or sammy com for my blog uh yeah. I, oh, and or Google Plus, I guess. I think Sammy Burks as well. Okay, that sounds good. And of course, you can find me, Ryan Ramper said, just about anywhere, especially on the Twitter, Ryan Mr. And of course, at thenexus.tv, because this is where we cover science news, especially breaking science news, especially when there's a rover crashing into Mars that survived successfully. What you are about to hear will be the final moments before and after the Curiosity rover has finally touched down on Mars. Sam and I will be narrating throughout, and you will hear our excitement. Please enjoy. Stand by flight. We have a connection, but we actually do not have any data yet. Copy. And there was a collective sigh. Intermittent contact at this time, as the... uh... Signal gets Two minutes till entry. Oh wait. Two minutes, three minutes past entry. Damn it, I was looking at the wrong freaking thing. Yeah, it has entered that atmosphere already. Uh, it is slowing yeah, down I, a little. I just, it was a plus sign, not a minus sign. I didn't realize. It has slowed down significantly, you know, from its 12th. Well, they are past peak acceleration. Right. So that's three minutes to touchdown. Uh, like four minutes to touchdown. Okay. 
I can't see it. It's hard to see on that screen. There's uh, Mars in the way. Oh, it's moving. Oh, my gosh. It's dropping things out of it. Oh, Ballast 1 is gone. Ballast 6 is gone. A lot of them are gone. Oh, they're all gone. No, 5 is gone. 3 is gone. 4 is gone. They cleared Ballast. Oh, oh, it deployed something. Shoot, a parachute or something? Oh, yeah. There it goes. Parachute deploy. Yield shield separation coming up. Yeah. Six seconds. This is real time. The, the simulation this is seems, real time for us. The simulation seems a little bit. Uh, yeah, this is right. A little bit faster than what NASA is doing over there on the other screen, but yeah, pretty close. Oh, Earth occultation in 20 seconds. They time this real good. That's what a team of actual mathematicians and scientists do. Right. Right. Their sim is not as good as our sim. <laughs> so one of my friends on Twitter is tweeting real time what they say all the time, and it's funny. Yeah. Back shell separation in 40 seconds. 40. Dude, I can't wait for the sky crane part. So, it's communicating through Odyssey now, because we already achieved, or already passed Earth occultation. Right. That's really... You know, once we get the internet in space, you know, we're going to be good. Google Fiber in space. Oh, oh, thing, separation, back shell separation. We're down to 86 meters per second at an altitude of 4 kilometers and descending. We've lost tones from Earth at this time. I think, I feel like the simulation is ahead of... It definitely is. It is definitely a little bit of uh, a little bit ahead of what NASA is reporting. Oh, yeah, so they just they just heard the parachute, right? So uh, the computer simulation won't know if it blew up yet. Well, obviously not. It's a best case scenario there. Descent stage throttle down. Rover is doing its little sky crane thing. Touchdown, according to the sim. Oh, fly away. There it goes. Constant velocity, accordion, nominal. Altitude error, 5.9 meters. Descent, a, descent stage, engine cut off. Alright, now we've just got to listen to the... Okay, oh, so in right. the still at 6.5 kilometers. So now in the sim, the all of the data has left. Right. Well, the sim is over. Right. Do you think they uh, they programmed in like an explosion just in case like it didn't work? Do you think they'll ex- explode it in the sim? No. No, that's too bad. They're pretty far away yet, though. Oh! So everybody on Twitter just exploded. This is great. I can't wait till the power descent. Like when the I, everybody's just gonna get super insane. Oh, they already started. Yeah. (laughs) 
We are continuing to receive telemetry from Curiosity. We're safe. The surface of Mars. As cam sequence is kicked off, waiting for images. Do you have a video of this? Like, this is this is their live data from the Odyssey tournament. Like they can't have a vi a camera on it because obviously if no, they did, then they would just like do it. Like even if they did, it would take forever to get back. So the Mars Curiosity has its own Twitter account, and it just said, "I'm safely on the surface of Mars, Gale Crater. I am in you." Wait, I'm I'm watching the TV. Yeah, they made it. Thumbnails are coming down. Everybody's in the offices is just going crazy. Odyssey's nice and high in the sky. Now it's all over. At this time, we're standing by for images. What? Oh. <laughs> Thumbnails are here. I don't know what it's of, but there's a thumbnail and more cheering. Maybe the first image? Yeah. F first image is a thing. Ooh. It appears to be, you know, a picture of the lander and then what's looking out, you know, after the camera. Thumbnails. In a few minutes, we might get even a, a, two, a, a larger 250 to 256 uh, frame uh, 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 pixel image um, of that same same end. So we're looking at the shadow. See, the horizon is actually really in the distance. You can't really tell that. So we're looking actually at the shadow of the late afternoon sun. Uh, oh, there it is. And uh, what? Well, uh, Right there. So these are the rear house cams. These are the rear house cams. And, and it so does have a dust cover on it. It does point. have a dust cover, but it's the dust that covers the problem. It's the fact there's dust mm -hmm. in the air because we have just blown dust all over the place mm -hmm. with our descent engines. So, so it appears that there is some dust cover, but I'm not sure how bad that is. Mm -hmm. So there could be more. There could be more. If we get, if we wait, we might get, oh yeah, oh, this is the high risk, this is the 256. Oh, 256 pixel image is coming in. Oh, higher res, that's its shadow. Oh, you can see the wheel the in the picture. Mm -hmm. That's cool. We, should, we might get another one of these, and if we're lucky, before Odyssey goes away, we'll get two more of these same injuries going the other side of the vehicle, and also probably dusty. This is amazing. So that is one of Curiosity's local wheels exactly. on the surface of Mars. Yes. Well, we have another, it's another image coming down. This is a view looking the other direction. They're still, it's still being processed. You'll see it in just a second here. This is another, this is a, another thumbnail image. Is that a shadow? That's the shadow of the rover. 
on the surface of Mars. Third image has been received. Oh, it's even in color. Initially, I just thought it was in black and white, but it is actually some definition of color. Mm -hmm. So it seems like Odyssey is setting behind a mountain, so I don't think we're going to be getting too many more pictures. Right. Uh, yeah, no, it, they said we might get a couple more pictures from the front of the rover before Odyssey goes behind the mountain. Oh, sweet. Look at this. I'll bring it up from here, I'm sure. There it is. Like in, like on the moon at the beginning of the kind of moon. That was exciting. I got a tweet about it. You've missed out on the Twitter, man. We've been tweeting here all along. Yeah, did you tweet? We, well, I mean, oh man, I tweeted a lot. I don't know if it's the most exciting thing this year. It is. I don't know about that. There's still uh, still four months left. Yeah, but watching the landing was exciting. So far this year. <laughs> of course, Doe is Doe. What? Say that again? Doe? Yeah. Or Doe posted on Facebook. Probably. Yeah. So whenever I ask you to say something again, I always put it in my hand to my ear to like, like you know when they, like like so they can push in the the headphones. Like I don't know, it's just yeah. something you do. Uh, Faze, if anybody in the MSA is listening, you should check out our target location uh, on this current fly through. Yep. If anyone in the MSA is online, you should watch this flight. Is that Lance Armstrong is going? Oh, somebody just tweeted, these images are coming faster from Mars than they would over AT&T. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 